to ask um, Professor Mwini Kony Mwini Hija, I think that's close enough, isn't it? Um, who's Executive Director of Kamesa, the Kamesa Group of African Countries and the Leather and Leather Products Institute. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is my pleasure to represent Africa. And um, as the title reads, we are optimistic that Africa is now at a stage of renaissance. And I will try in the next 10 to 15 minutes to prove my case. How the technology behaves. Ah, there we are. Um, I think I will uh, just give you a small introduction then uh, give the global preview and give the Africa's review and then LLPI which is the Leather and Leather Products Institute which is actually an intergovernmental organization that is responsible for policy direction in Africa what are we focusing on and of course I conclude and uh, save you uh, at least for lunch, because I'm privileged to talk after midday. Now, who are we? We have been set by 17, um, well, we have two more countries that have joined, uh, giving us 19 countries. They've given us a mandate to actually uh, provide some directions on the leather sector. We have been in existence uh, from 1993. We will be celebrating our 25 years at the end of the year. And uh, we would like to celebrate in style by making sure that we bridge with the rest of the global players because Africa has been isolated for a long time and it has been dubbed as a raw hides and skins exporter and yet the geopolitical uh, climate is changing very fast. One of the issues that is actually changing is that um, African countries have found out that it can work better with the rest of the world to make sure that out of the 26.32% uh, of what Africa represents to the world can actually be translated by value adding 14% of the highs and skins that we are actually contributing to the world scenario. Unfortunately, out of the 14% that we are actually contributing, we are only getting a value of 3.32% of the total global wealth, which is estimated at 100 billion US dollars. I know there are some school of thoughts that are thinking that we are at 50 billion, but I think they are un underestimating that. And I will prove my case because if 65% of the total production uh, of 23 billion square feet of leather is produced in the world, then we are looking at the shoe uh, industry consuming around 14.9% square feet. If you divide that by 2.5, which is required to produce a shoe, it gives you 6 billion pairs of shoe out of a total of 13 billion pairs of shoe, and that gives you around 50% of pure leather shoes compared to synthetic material. This is huge, and if you take the lowest value of export, uh, the global value being at around 10 US dollar per pair, then already you can see if we are talking about 6 billion pairs, you're talking about 60 billion US dollars. And if you're talking about 15 uh, US dollar per pair, you're talking about 90. And if you're talking about the global world average, then you're talking about 120 billion US dollars. So you can see this is a huge industry and uh, we need to take pride of that. Now, those are some of the statistics that I was looking for. In particular, I would like you to look at Africa. Out of the 12 billion US dollars, I mean uh, billion pairs, you can see, of course, this includes synthetics because I've told you that 6 billion of it is actually pure leather. Uh, Africa just uh, produces 150 million pairs. Out of the 20... 1% contribution of livestock and out of the 14 billion, I mean percent of the global uh, production. So this tells you that we have the opportunity and uh, this is why I dubbed my presentation as the Renaissance, telling you that we have unexplored opportunities that we can all sit down, discuss and see how Africa can value from it, away from the uh, doldrums of it being just an export of raw hides and skins, because the geopolitical uh, position is that we need to create jobs for our people, create wealth, and at the same time bring rural development. 
Now, I did a small um, synthesis of the world shoe production, and as you can see, the green line, I hope it's green for everybody, because I know color sometimes could be a challenge, um, is that we are not doing so well in as far as pro you know, producing uh, the shoes as the demand. The red one is the demand, because the demand is almost tripling and uh, moving up so fast that all what it tells you that by the year 2030, we cannot be able to satisfy more than 27 billion pairs that the world will require. This puts us, especially in this forum of the World Leather Congress, at a quagmire, telling us that if we don't step up the green line, we are going to let the synthetics take over the footwear industry. And this will be bad news, especially for Africa, which looks for the raw hides and skins as its basis of raw material, and at the same time, addressing some of those uh, social indicators that I've just mentioned. Now we know that if out of 100 billion US dollars, it represents 66% of the total uh, market and value chain, then 26% is actually for leather and 8% is for eyes and skins. So if you stratify that and convert it into value, you can see the global leather value chain is more than 150 billion US dollars. I can tell you that straight off from that. So we have been underestimating that. Of course, these are the value addition that we are looking at. That is not important. Let's now go into the grist of the matter. The population in Africa right now is 1.1 billion. We are looking at the GDP of 2.39 compared to Europe, which of course is now hitting over 3 billion US dollars and very close, uh, close, of course, to America, which is uh, at around almost the same figure. What is important for us is that Africa has really been growing, and in this year alone, we are anticipating that it's going to be five and three quarters of uh, an annual increase, and this, of course, uh, has made all the countries in Africa to start looking at what it can do to solidify this particular base. Comesa region, which is the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa, which is comprises of uh, the 19 countries I was talking about, has a population of 571 billion, and we are looking at a, uh, I mean a GDP of 571 uh, US uh, uh, billion dollars, and it has a population of 450, with the East African community, another trading block of 99.8 billion uh, US, US dollars in GDP, and of course, uh, 160 million. What is important with these figures is two of the slides that will follow. One, by 2050, the World Bank projects that we'll have around two or three countries in Africa moving to the top 10 fastest growing countries in the world. I'm trying to prove my point on the Renaissance. And this is important because uh, I was just listening to Mexico and I was very mesmerized about how they've moved so fast in a very short period of time. And you can see Mexico will be number eight by the time we reach 2050, hoping that we'll all be alive by that time to witness that growth. And of course, you'll see Nigeria, South Africa, and Egypt will be among some of the top 10, I mean, some of the top 20 countries by 2050. This is possible because of the following reason. There's no other place on the globe right now where you can support a huge livestock of, of, of over 800 million heads of cattle, 37 or around 38 million, uh, of course, highs, 150.3 million sheep and goat skins than Africa, where we still use what is termed as the extensive system. All over the world now, uh, we are changing our animal husbandry practices to go to intensive care systems. And this definitely will make everybody look towards us. The other statistics that will actually uh, bring some excitement is um, India, in December 29th, 30th, gave a big major statement for its leather sector. It's going to move from 13 billion uh, uh, crores to 25 billion crores in the next five years. The question is, if they're getting 60% of their hides and skins from all over the world, how will they double? They will have to look for Africa for that. And this is very exciting because already we are starting discussions with India together with China, whom I'll show you why China is becoming a, a very critical partner also for Africa uh, on what is going to happen for our own uh, survivability. Of course, the only problem that is letting us down is the technology transfer and the ability for us to convert hides and skins into leather products. For instance, 
you find like if you use an index of 16.6 representing a cattle hide, we are obtaining 10.6 out of that, meaning that we have high losses along the supply chain, and then we're only converting 2% of the initial index as light bovine leather and only 1% for export value. That's why I'm in disagreement with uh, some of the publications which show that Africa is at 6%. We have not reached there. If I reach there, I'll be the first one to be excited. So what are we talking about business? I think that's the bottom line. Um, with a population of 1.1 billion, our shoe per capita per person per year is at 0.8% right now. This translates us to an 880 million pairs. So if Mexico can be one of the countries that we can bridge, because I saw what they're producing, this is a huge market. And the only uh, uh, satisfaction we are actually giving that market is 154.9 million. We have a deficit of 725 million pairs. The question is, why are we in a position of that nature? It's because we don't produce enough, as I showed you, our conversion ratios are very poor. Our biggest uh, importer, of course, is, uh, this is African production per million. I've already given you that. In Africa, by the way, we will move from uh, 880 million to 1.9 billion by 2030. That is the demand factor we have. So you can see how huge the market is. So one of the greatest things that we want to do is to make sure that we work with, the, with other global players in the small to medium enterprises. This will allow Africa to catch up with the rest of the world and be able also to create some employment for its own people, which is a political problem now. So the question is, how are we making it conducive? I'm happy to report to you that in the last two years, we have managed to develop policies particularly directed to the leather sector for 12 countries within Comesa alone. This is good news for the global market because it says, therefore, in any of these 13 to 12 countries that you'll be going to do business with, they are now having an enabling environment for you to, you know, to talk about investment, your marketing portfolios, and all these issues. The market is huge, and we have a very big consumer group that has emerged of over 300 million youths who have actually uh, been in instituted into very high value industries like ICT and the rest of the thing. We, we are almost following the same pathway like India. Now, what happened to our big market in Europe? Immediately, REACH came in. You can see what happened after 2005. We could not trade anymore with Europe, and China took up. And I can see my colleague from China looking at that figure very well. <laughs> so we are now the big, I mean, we are big traders with China, and we need to start uh, looking at what we can do with Europe again, because one of the best things that we lost when Europe went uh, was the rapid trading arrangements that Europe has. When you do trade with Europe, you are guaranteed of getting quick uh, uh, transfers of your funds to the country. So. We are therefore saying that we would like to do the following, make sure that we build the bridges, work out closely with the SMEs, want you to come and invest in Africa so that we could see how then we could value add that big potential that has remained unexplored so that you can help that country to build its uh, renaissance. I think with that I just want to say the following as my conclusive remarks. That leather sector occupies a place of prominence in the region's economy, that the comparative ad advantage, as I have proven to you, is not yet turned into comparative advantage. Potential of highs and skins as a product is not realized in most of, of, of African countries. Despite the contrast that exists today, the investment potential is clear and the market opportunities are abound. You can talk to us as an institution to help you enter in some of the countries. That's our job, that's my job. And of course, value addition enhanced participation in the global leather and leather products market will have a contribution in job creation, and that I want to thank all these bodies, including yourself, for giving me those few minutes just to talk to you. Thank you very much.